you know of the kingdom of Camavor to the east, far across the seas, whose name lies all but forgotten among the ruins that dot its shores? If you were still, know of its foolish young ruler, whose love-struck heart ended up destroying it. What is now a bad memory and is becoming a children's story was once known as Viego, the Ruined King. The second son of a dynastic king, Viego was never intended to lead. Instead, he lived a life of comfort that made him complacent and selfish. Yet, when his older brother died unexpectedly, Viego, possessed neither the inclination nor the aptitude for rulership, suddenly found himself crowned. He showed little interest in his position until he met a poor seamstress, Isolde. So taken was he by her beauty that the young king offered her hand in marriage, and thus one of the most powerful rulers of the age was wed to a peasant girl. Their romance enchanting, the stuff of fairy tales, and Viego, who'd rarely shown interest in anyone other than himself, devoted his life to her. The two were inseparable, he scarcely went anywhere without his own, always lavishing gifts upon his queen, and his attention could seldom be broken when she was present. Diego's allies fumed, unable to interest him in governance, and with the nation beginning to unravel under his questionable rulership, some plotted in secret to end their new king's reign before it had begun. His nation's enemies, meanwhile, saw an opportunity to strike and the vipers began to circle. Thus did an assassin's poison dagger one day come for Viego, but the king was well defended, and the dagger did not strike true, instead grazing poor Isolde. The toxin worked quickly, and Isolde fell into illness. Viego, poor foolish child that he was, could only watch in abject horror as he saw the love of his life slipping, and her condition growing ever more serious. He sent everyone to search for a cure, a way to save the one thing he cared in that world. Generals, friends, family, gold, resources. His very kingdom would be the fuel to fire his obsession. He did not care for costs, he did not even care for relationships. All he cared was that it would bring back Isolde. But alas, it became too late, and she died. But that would not stop him. Driven mad with the grief, he cradled her corpse, now a rotting husk. He patiently waited for someone to return. Surely, someone, anyone, must have had a solution, found a way to bring her back. And someone did. His niece, Callista, had come back from the lands of the Blessed Isles, although not with a way to revive his old her queen, but with a secret. A secret Viego's general, Hecarim, very gladly took from her. What happened next is all but history. Viego took her there and triggered the ruination and went into a thousand years of slumber, only to wake up and do the exact same thing to all of Runeterra. His issues became everyone's problem. And yet, he was stopped, as many tyrants are, as many invaders, outsiders, villains are. But the problem, it was never Viego. No, the real problem was what remained. For there is one hand that has been shaping and guiding this young fool this entire time. From the moment he stepped onto the Isles for the first time, Thresh made sure that what happened would turn him into this. Would turn him into the one to take Viego's crown and command of the Black Mist. No. Viego was an appetizer. For none, none can outclass this monster in raw cruelty. Once a curator, 
for the vaults of the city of Helia in the Blessed Isles. Even as a human, his cruelty earned him the isolation of his peers. At the time, he was just pathetic. A man with no friends that knew only suffering for both others and himself. And yet, when the mist took him, what came out wasn't some weird perversion of that. No, no. The thing that came out was Thresh as he was always meant to be. A monster. Now this monster seeks to take everything. And the Sentinels find themselves with another war to fight. Will they succeed?